So I know that your family has been connected to the soil in this area for generations. How long has your family been farming this land? My grandma and grandpa bought this farm back in 1919, so we're 104 years in. Uh, my grandkids were the fifth generation on this family farm. Wow. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what it is for a farmer to know his or her soil. So how would you say you get to know your soil? Or in other words, what's the process for getting to know the land that you are farming? Time for one thing. You learn over time where and what not to do. Um, soil testing. Yeah, the other thing we do is we take each of our fields and we set them out on a two and a half acre grid and go through and pull six inch deep soil samples across. We do usually half of our acres every single year just to know exactly what the nutrient levels are in our soils. So would it be fair to say that the, the soil that you have in one area just down the field a little bit, that soil could be a little bit different? Yeah, oh. about every, every two and a half acres on the farm, for the most part, has a lot of different characteristics to it. And in the same part, some similarities too. So. That's really interesting. I guess when, being a town girl growing up, I would look out at a field and it all looked the same to me. But as farmers, you probably understand the intricacies and the uniqueness of even just spots within that, that whole field. Yeah, on the surface, it all looks the same. But when you start digging down, uh, that's when you find uh, differences in a matter of feet sometimes. Otherwise, it could be in a matter of, you know, yards. Hmm. So then how does knowing your soil and going through all of that testing and that process, how does that influence the decisions that you make for whatever your desired outcome is for that field? Well, we use the soil test to determine how much uh, fertility we need in a certain area. And we basically uh, apply accordingly so we're not over applying you know to ruin the earth and we're not under applying so we don't get a, a good yield off of it that yeah to say yeah so we're we usually take what we've learned from our soil samples and we build soil or uh, fertility recommendations based on what we learned from the soil and then based off of the yield history what we've pulled off the field and that's what we use to build, we build variable rate uh, fertility prescriptions that go, like I said, we sample every two and a half acres, so we're changing our fertility plan every two and a half acres through the field. Wow. So you really have to, you really have to learn first before you can make the decisions that you need to make. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So given that, how would you say that tending the soil has changed or is different from your family's previous generations of farmers on this land? Well, when back when my grandpa farmed this, uh, they used horses and uh, a lot of plowing, moldboard plowing, where we would turn the earth soil completely over. And my dad sort of did the same uh, concept for much of his uh, farming career. When I came along, I started that way and then we moved to a more of a... Uh, less aggressive. Less aggressive, style. yeah, tillage style. We left more residue on top of the ground. And now, uh, Grant has, has uh, not forced me, but forced me to see different ways of, of doing things. And we went to a, what they call a strip tillage uh, format which we just till an 8 inch strip and put our fertilizer in that strip and then we plant right on top of that so going from turning everything black to leaving all this trash on top has been uh, 
I don't want to say difficult for me, but it has uh, been a challenge for me. So Grant, how, many, how long did it take your son to convince you to try this new method? Uh, about five years. <laughs> but I did, I did change. I, did, I have adapted. And the persistence? In yeah, sometimes you have to, if you believe in something, you have to be persistent about it. So, you know, it took me a few years of laying that little seed in his head to finally taking him out and we got him to the point where he at least was willing to go look at some fields that some people had done before. And then to the point of, he doesn't know this, but we, the first 40 acres we strip tilled, I had already said yes to it before I called him and asked him if, <laughs> if it be, and if he said no, then I was going to pay for it. So, <laughs> in one way or another. <laughs> I'd like to move a little bit to talking about the actual planting. So you you do all this work to learn about and get to know your soil. How do you know when it's time to plant the seeds? Well, some would say calendar, but that's calendar has a little bit of of uh, say in it. But typically, it's the the texture of the soil. Uh, we use kind of a uh, kind of a crazy idea. I don't know if it's crazy or not, but it's we take a we go out and we uh, take a handful of dirt and we'll squeeze it and make a ball and we'll drop it from, from chest high and if it hits the ground and it kind of breaks open, it's about the right moisture content to, to plant. If it doesn't, you wait. Mm -hmm. Have you ever planted something in the soil that didn't end up growing in the way that you thought it would? Yeah. <laughs> Mother Nature has a lot of hold on us when it comes to planting. You know, we can try and do every single thing right going into the season. We can try and get it planted right. But then Mother Nature sometimes decides that they want to... Humble us. Yeah. <laughs> no, so either a hailstorm coming through or getting too much moisture or not enough moisture. You know, we're very reliant on Mother Nature for how our, our outcome turns out at the end of the year. So I have a kind of a follow-up question to that last one, which is that scenario. Have you ever had the experience when you thought you did everything right? You got to know your soil really well, you picked the right seed, you planted them, you tended to the crops, everything looked like it was going to go exactly the way you hoped, and then? Life happens, sometimes not in the way you want it to. If that has happened for you, what was that like? And how did you come through that? One day at a time. You know, you, we had a situation, this was many, many years ago, where we, I had, we had the, probably the nicest looking field of beans I've ever seen in my life. I thought, man, we're, this is gonna be a great year. Uh, at the time, we were still row crop cultivating, and clouds turned green, and I thought, this is not good. So I come home, or tried to get home. I got a half a mile from home, and this hailstorm hit, and I watched my field of soybeans, God, it's tough, go from this beautiful field to nothing. And it really humbles you when you see that happen, because I had no control over it. But, you know, we had people to help us out. We had, you know, insurance, and we came out good on the, on the back end of it. But uh, it doesn't always go the way you plan. No, farmers are eternal optimists. It, if it didn't turn out well this year, next year's always gonna be better. We always have a shot next year, but... You hope. The year that it doesn't go well, <laughs> it, it's hard. I rely on faith. I have a final question I'd like to ask you, and as 
you know, the theme for our Synod Assembly this year is flourish. And from Psalm 1, we hear these words, like trees planted by streams of water. When you hear, hear that Bible verse, like trees planted by streams of water, what do you hear for you? I hear lush growing corn standing tall along the road. It, it just, there's nothing like it to see that corn crop or the beans. It's, it's just beautiful. I don't know what you guys think, but. No, that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I get out of it is. Some people, everybody finds beauty in different places. Some people think deserts are beautiful. Some people think the forests are, but growing up where I did and living where I do, driving down the road with my family and being able to look out across the field and see, that's what I did and that's, I put all this work and time into it and then being able to get through the end of the year and see the return that I get out of it is, that's what that makes me think of, so. Well, I really want to thank all of you for being with us. I also want to note that Barb is as much a part of this farming family. She is a co-farmer um, with her husband and her son, and she has lost her voice. So <laughs> she would have contributed today. And Sarah, thank you for being here as well. Thanks for being the farmers that you are. Um, you have been inspiring for me, and uh, I hope that all those who are watching at our assembly this year are inspired by your story too. Thank you.